um, <clears throat> some of my high school students wanted to learn how to crochet so that they can crochet sleeping bags for the homeless. So, since I can't be there to teach them over the weekend and holidays, I decided I would make them some tutorial videos, so I'm going to share those with you too. And I'm going to start off by teaching them just the basic steps of crochet, and then I'll show them how to do the bags. I've got my little paper here because otherwise I wouldn't know where my camera is looking. Let me see, I'm trying to find the end of this wadded up bit of extra. Here we go, it just got wrapped around there for some reason. Here we go, I found the end. So, <clears throat> to start off, what you need to do is make a chain. Now to make the chain, you're going to take your yarn and the yarn that is attached to your ball of yarn needs to go over the back of your fingers. Hold the, the loose yarn in these fingers like this, wrap it over and you're going to cross. Then what you're going to do, this little bit of yarn that goes back here, push it under that first set. It sounds a lot more complicated than it is. And all you're doing is making a slip knot. Slip your crochet hook in and tighten the knot just like that. Now I'm going off the assumption that you guys don't know anything about crochet, so this, this is for a total beginner. Now what you're going to do, move this just a little bit, keep that working yarn, which is the yarn that's connected to your yarn ball, keep that working yarn going over the back of your index finger. You're going to want it to come down your palm where you can just loosely grab it with your, the last two fingers of your hand. That knot that you made, you're going to use your middle finger and thumb to hold it in place. And you're going to keep that working yarn just a little taut, just a little tight. Take your hook, rotate it behind that working yarn, grab it and pull it through the loop. And you're just going to do this several times until you get the length that you want. This is called making the chain. Now you're going to need to slide those fingers holding it up as you make the chain. Otherwise it gets a little hard to control. So I'm just going to do a couple of chains so that I can show you a few of the basic stitches. And there is no weight to this little yarn ball so it's just following. And I'm in my kitchen right now so if you're hearing highway noise I apologize. You just keep making your little chains. Now the first stitch I'm going to show you is not one that we're going to use on this project, but you need to know how to do it anyway. So, still holding the working yarn just like we did to make the chain and still holding the chain, you're go we're going to do a single stitch or a single crochet. Hold the loop with your thumb, the loop that's on your hook. Insert the head of your hook into the second stitch from your hook. So you're going to skip that first stitch right here. So go into the second stitch, grab that yarn and pull it through, and then wrap and grab and pull through again. And that's a single crochet. I'll show you one more time. So holding the loop that's on the hook, slip it through that next stitch, grab the yarn and pull it through, wrap the yarn one more time, grab and pull through. And there you have a single stitch. You can do an entire project in single stitch. It takes a while but it ends up looking really nice. Now the next stitch I'm going to show you is called the half double stitch or half double crochet. To do the half double crochet you're going to hold on to this little loop here, wrap the yarn over your hook one time just like that. Now that you've got the yarn wrapped hold both loops with your thumb loosely. You don't want it too tight. Slip the head of the hook into that next stitch just like before, yarn over and pull through. Now <clears throat> you have three loops on your hook. To make the half double crochet you have to have those three loops. Then you're going to yarn over and grab that yarn and pull it through all three loops at one time. And that's called a half double crochet. It builds up your project faster is all that does. Now I'm going to show you one more time. So hold that loop, yarn over your hook one time, slip through the next stitch, yarn over again and pull through that stitch, then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Now you have a half double crochet. 
Now that's the crochet stitch that we're going to be using on these sleeping mats for the homeless. But I'm going to show you um, one more stitch and that's the double stitch. So just like doing the half double stitch, you're going to hold onto that loop, yarn over your hook one time, hold both loops, slip it through that stitch, yarn over and pull through. So just like with the half double crochet, you have three loops on your hook. Here's where it gets different. You're going to yarn over and pull that yarn just through these first two loops. So yarn over, pull through. Now you're going, you've got two loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through both loops. Okay, so that is a double crochet. And the reason it, it's called the double crochet is because you have to yarn over and pull through twice. So I'm gonna do it one more time. Yarn over, slip it into that next stitch yarn over, pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Now you can do just about any crochet stitch that way. Um, I'll go ahead and show you one more. The triple stitch. To do a triple stitch, you yarn over twice. So starting off you have one, two, three loops on your hook. Slip it through that next stitch, yarn over and pull through. Now you have four loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through two. Now you have three loops. Yarn over and pull through two. Now you have two loops. Yarn over and pull through two. So see, we yarned over three times, which is what makes it the triple stitch. You can go up to six that way. I, have, I haven't really seen it work very well for seven, but I'm sure it would. But you can see how each stitch that we've done is just a little bit taller than the previous stitch. Now, to do this project, this is a size eye hook, by the way, um, or 5.5 millimeter. To do this project, you're not going to use regular yarn. You're going to use yarn made out of plastic shopping bags. Um, I believe I have a plastic shopping bag available here. Give me just a minute to grab it. And I'm going to show you how to make that plastic yarn. Okay, this shopping bag has a hole in it. Let me see. I have plastic shopping bags everywhere because I'm trying to use them all up making this project. Okay, here we have Walmart bag. Walmart is practically everywhere, so you should have no problem finding bags. You can also use plastic tablecloths or Dillard's bag, any kind of good sturdy plastic shopping bag. Now the first thing you're going to do is flatten this bag out as much as you can. You're going to have to cut off the bottom and I found it's easier to cut the bottom off before you fold it. It's just easier to keep it straight and you don't have as many mistakes. Not that uh, there's going to be that many mistakes in a project like this because it is very forgiving. You're just working with plastic. And see, I've already missed a section right there. There we go. So I've cut off the bottom because you're not going to use the bottom. Now I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm just going to fold it in half twice, just like that. And I have to cut off these handles because we cannot use the handles. So I'm going to cut off the handles. And then I'm going to fold this again, just like this, just to make it nice and thin. Press it to get all the air out, fold it in half, long ways. Got it about that long. Now what you're going to do is you're going to cut off one inch sections starting at the open end. So we're going to cut off a section and then cut off a section. You don't want bags that have great big holes in them because you're not going to be able to use those. So see we're cutting off one inch sections and then this section that we folded is actually too long. So we're going to open it and cut along that crease. Now you have all of these little plastic rings. And you really want good scissors to do this. I discovered that uh, those little Fiskars do not work and your hands will get very, very tired trying to cut enough of this to make a mat. So I suggest Fiskars or sewing scissors, something like that, the big sewing scissors. Um, now, to attach these, you're gonna do the same sort of loop method that you would use in making rubber band bracelets. 
what I've told my students that have a difficult time remembering the order. Put it through and make a T. Bring it up to a U shape. See, it looks like a U. Cross it into an X and then hold it steady and just bring that through. And sometimes it will catch, but you just have to work it through. See? And then once you've got enough of these done, you'll just roll it into a ball like this and it's really easy to attach to the end of the ball. You just continue with that little rubber band method. But now I'm going to show you how to get started with the actual project that my girls are working on. We call ourselves MAD, M-A-D, MAD Hands, Making a Difference. So, and I would like to thank a very sweet lady, Kira, for the suggestion of that name. So here is a mat that we have started. You can see this is all done with the half double crochet. And um, you can get neat patterns going with this using different colored bags. Um, this one I was just really getting started so the girls could see how to do it. But anyway, here we are. You'll start off with a chain just like before and then you're going to do half double crochet. So you're going to wrap around your hook and you do need a larger hook for this. The smaller hooks do not work as well. This is a size L or an 8 millimeter hook. Um, I like the hooks with the bamboo handles because I have large hands. So if you get a larger hook, it's easier for people with larger hands to do these projects. So anyway, just like using the regular yarn, you want your working yarn or plarn, plastic yarn, to go over your index finger. Hold on to it just like before. And you're going to slide your hook under both of those stitches there and just pull it through. Yarn over, go under, pull through, and you're going to end up with some sections like this where my girls have tied it together because it didn't work right for them. That is just fine. You can still make it work. So yarn over, slip through, and you see here this is a different kind of bag that was used. This was a, um, this one was an apple bag from Apple Electronics. So it's a little thicker, but you still just slide through, pull it through. And I hope you're seeing this. I hope I've got this all set up right. So just continue, yarn over, pull through. And when you get to these thicker bags, it is a little more difficult to pull the yarn through, but that's all right. Just keep going. See, yarn over, pull through. And it works up really fast, especially if you're using a half double crochet stitch. Um, <clears throat> if you use the single crochet, crochet stitch, it's going to be harder to get your hook through and it's going to take a lot longer for you to get the size mat that you need. When we're done with these mats, each mat will be about six foot by three foot, long enough um, to fit under a blanket. Um, the purpose of these mats is for the homeless to put them under the blankets that they sleep on to keep them dry and warm. It'll insulate them. Now see here's some more. This is a, a food mall bag, but it's it's really thick. It's a very thick plastic um, and it just adds a little bit of contrast. It's fine. Sometimes you'll have to twist these bags that don't want to stay together. I'm glad I ran into this. It shows you where the difficult parts are. And as good and sturdy as these really thick bags are, they can be a problem um, to work through. So I would suggest not trying to use too many of these thicker bags just because they do not like to move. They're very sturdy, as I said. They're not going to fall apart, but they are so difficult to work with. And this bag, this thick, sturdy bag, Shout out to my friend in Jersey. Roberta sent me a whole box of bags so that we could use them on this project. So kudos to her for being such an awesome good Samaritan. And kudos to everybody who is donating to this project. Um, I'm not the first to do this. In fact, a friend of mine who suggested the name, uh, she started this in Florida and I'm not sure where she got the idea. 
and I'm located in Arkansas and then we've got friends in California who are getting started in this and helping out so this is really crossing the nation this is a huge excellent way to pay it forward and I'm so proud of everybody for helping I'm proud of my seventh and eighth grade girls you girls rock even if you don't realize it um, <clears throat> So, and that's what you do. Now, when you get to the end, and I'm not going to make this video that long because this stuff, you have to fight with it a little bit. So, it takes a little bit y longer to crochet with the plastic than it does with the yarn. But, you see, once you get the hang of it, you can just really fly with it. And it builds up so fast. So, there's that. Now, I'm going to set this aside and show you what to do when you get to the end of it. But I'm going to do it with regular yarn. Whatever you do with regular yarn, you can do with the plastic yarn. So, um, let me see. I'm just going to finish this off with some half double crochets so that I can get to the end. See, I slipped there. I didn't have, see? I didn't have quite enough tension on there. So anyway, I'm going to slip through here. I'm going to finish this row of chains so I can show you what to do to turn it. And turning it is simply when you get to the end of a row and you have to turn the project so you can continue crocheting. And a lot of people get confused when it comes time to turn. That's okay. See? We all have issues. I've turned into fumble fingers suddenly. Actually, anytime I have to switch from a larger hook to a smaller hook, it takes me some time to uh, adjust. See? That one just doesn't want to grab. Alright, so I've just about got this one done. And now I am back to that first stitch where I made my slip knot. So, once I slip into this one, that row is finished. But now to turn it and go back the other way, and yes, this has a big lump in it because I did those uh, double crochets and triple crochets. But once I want to go back this direction, what I'm going to do, I'm going to chain one, turn my project so it faces the other way, and then I'm just going to start again, slipping through that stitch, and half double, half double, all the way. And I realize most of you that are going to come across this video are already experienced crocheters. That's fine. Um, this is really just to help my girls. So we have this. Now, if you run out of yarn, say it just, you, you had less than you thought you did and you weren't able to finish your row, we're just going to cut this off. So, say I didn't have enough to finish this row. What I'm going to do is I'm going to single slip stitch and tie it off. And then I'm going to take this other yarn and I'm going to attach it by slipping through here. That last stitch you did, you're just going to slip into the top of it. Grab your yarn, pull it through, and then you're going to do what is called a slip stitch. Let me get that out of the way. So you've got your working yarn. You just let this extra little bit hang down. You're going to do a slip stitch, which is to grab and pull through one time. And if you want to, you can do it a second time. That's usually what I do so that it sticks. So go back into that same stitch, pull through one time, and pull that loop straight through the loop that was already in the hook without yarning over. Okay? And now that's attached and you can just keep going yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and yes, I just pulled through over those extra bits that were hanging down. That lets me weave it in and then I don't have to worry about sewing that in there later. So, yarn over, pull through, and that'll just finish it up like that. That looks like a hot mess right now because I didn't plan out those stitches, but that's fine too. So, I hope that was 
entertaining and educational and I hope that you'll do what you can to help people in your area whether it's by making these mats, um, donating time and energy, giving them a little bit of food, giving them just some attention. Everybody needs uh, someone to talk to. So do what you can to help people. Do what you can to make a difference. Differences start with each of us. Making the world a better place starts with each of us. So let's see what you can do today. Thanks, and remember, you guys all rock.